Hello, I'm Alex Merced, and you're listening to Economics. Why not? On this show, every week we're going to be talking about different economic concepts and economic news. If you enjoy the show, please think of supporting the show by becoming a monthly patron by going to patreon.com slash alexmerced. Also, make sure to check out libertydeal.info for all sorts of great products and special deals that you can get through the show, which will also help support the show. And plus a cool reading list over there at libertydeal.info. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. My name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. And you're listening to Economics, Why Not? Where we talk about economics and try to learn new economic ideas, learn about different economic thinkers, and just talk economics every week. So in this week's episode, what I want to do is talk about marginal utility. So the whole idea of marginal thinking. Now what happens to this whole thing with um, the marginal revolution, where several different economists at the same time sort of started discovering the idea of marginal utility in different ways. Um, now, if I remember correctly, the three economists were Stanley Jevons, Karl Menger, and Newt Wicksell. And basically what happened is that they indif- basically ad- uh, discovered the idea of marginal utility in different ways, and all three of them have a lot of other really interesting contributions to economics as well. But the idea of marginal utility is that every unit of the same thing doesn't necessarily have the same value. That value is also relative to my prior use of something, okay? So, for example, uh, the analogy you'll always hear in an economics class, which is actually a pretty good analogy, is a pizza. So, imagine that you eat a slice of pizza. It's pretty good. So, let's pretend, let's pretend that we could actually perfectly n- make value numerical. So, we'll say that that has a value of 8, Mmm, really good pizza. Now, when you eat the next slice of pizza, it may still be pretty good, but it wasn't as good as that first slice. So maybe now you're enjoying it at seven. Still not so bad. But then afterwards, you're starting to get kind of full. Your body's desire for the pizza is kind of waning off. So the next one is like a five. Now you got to the fourth slice. You're full. You don't want it. So eating that pizza would actually be negative utility. It would actually be like negative three because you're forcing yourself. And it actually hurts for you to eat the pizza because your body's already full. So the point being is that for each additional unit, the value changes. And you can apply this logic to all sorts of thinking all across the economy. Okay, in the sense that we always sometimes just treat a dollar spent on something as just another dollar. So if you spend more dollars on education, education must be better. If you spend more money on the military, it must be better. But there's marginal utility. There's going to become a point where, yes, every dollar you spend, you'll buy things that will improve outcomes. But eventually, there's only so much of that stuff that you need. So then any further money, the additional utility becomes less. Um, So you have that marginal utility factor there and you can apply it to uh investment so a company when they reinvest their every generally like if you have a growth company this is like a very young company that's starting out they typically if they have profits they usually don't have profits for several years but once they finally start having profits they don't immediately pay out those profits as a dividend to its investors meaning pay out cash to all the people who invest in the company instead what they do is they even reinvest those profits they retain those profits because they have to make the this they have to have one make a decision is it better for me to grow the company is there going to be more return more money for the investors if i put this money back into growing the company or are the be- investors better served by me just giving them the cash now okay and this kind of gets into another idea so we might as well introduce today as well opportunity cost so basically, the opportunity cost is the cost of what you, what you could have done. So, for example, if I ate that fourth, if I ate that third slice of pizza that only gave me five val- units of value, well, instead of eating that third unit of pizza, maybe I could have eaten a half si- a cupcake half the size, 
and since it's a different flavor, at that point I may have enjoyed the cupcake six. So basically I have a cost of one because I couldn't eat the cupcake and gotten myself one extra point of value instead of filling myself up on the main course and not leaving room for dessert. So those are opportunity costs. It's the cost of you could have made another choice, you didn't. What didn't you get because you made that other choice? Hopefully you make the choice where you derive the most value, but sometimes you don't. Or sometimes you don't realize it at the time. So opportunity costs is a very important thing. Um, and sometimes opportunity costs are just exist because you did do something or someone did do something, something else didn't happen. So opportunity cost is always what could have been. And it's not every possibility of what could have been. What is sort of the most likely alternative? Well, you know, if this didn't happen, what likely would have happened? That's your opportunity cost. Because you can, you can kind of think of all sorts of different possible scenarios that didn't happen. But what was the most likely alternative? If, if X didn't happen, what would have been Y? That's your opportunity cost. So in that case, when that growth company is analyzing, do I pay the dividend or do I keep those profits? They're, fr- they're trying to determine what the opportunity cost here between both choices are. But when they retain those earnings, they keep investing into the company. And the idea is that every dollar invested in the company has utility in growing the company. But as the company gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the additional benefit of each additional dollar retained or reinvested in the company becomes less and less and less and less. That's why very large companies, they reinvest less of their money and start paying it out to the investors. Because the investors will see a bigger benefit. Because if I can take that same money, reinvest in the company, grow the company by 1%, or pay out that cash to the investors and give them a 3% return, then I'm better off giving the investors a 3% return. Okay, because that'll, that, and then, now we're gonna start getting into all sorts of finance, valuation stuff, so I'm gonna leave it at that, for that analogy. But those are the kind of decisions and economic thinking that, that can is much more easier to do once you understand these concepts. Once you understand the ideas of like subjective value, money, once you understand the values of like opportunity costs and marginal utility. So now that we understand what marginal utility is, what opportunity cost is, well, we'll leave it at that for our lesson for today. But we got a lot more economic concepts to talk about in future episodes with all sorts of fun analogies. And again, we'll start getting into more real world application as the show goes on. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day and enjoy. And again, make sure to check out libertydeal.info because a great book to listen to on economics. This is more of a specifically on healthcare economics, but a lot of people are curious about the healthcare issue. Is a book by the name of The Primal Prescription. And you can get the actual book if you go to prescription.libertydeal.link. That's link with dot L I N K. There it'll take you directly to where you can buy the book. But if you want the free audio book, which you can get for free just by giving Audible a free try, which is an awesome service that I use for listening to audiobooks. Because a lot of times I'm standing on a subway or whatnot, so I can't necessarily be reading a physical book. But if you go to libertydeal.info, click on the link for a free audiobook, you can get the primal prescription as a free audiobook and listen to it and learn a whole lot about the economics of healthcare. So I recommend checking that out. I'll see you guys in the next episode. You guys have a great day and enjoy.